Hi everyone, I'm Kelly and today I'll be talking about six lessons that I've learned as a first time mom in these first six months of motherhood. So the first thing is that daycare and going back to work was way better than I expected. I loved my maternity leave. Like I loved being with my daughter 24 um, seven and the days leading up to going back to work and sending her to daycare, I got really emotional. Like I would just randomly cry like before going to bed just because I think I was more sad that the chapter of like maternity leave was ending. And I was also a bit worried about daycare just because growing up for me and my siblings and like my cousins and stuff, like we all grew up with family taking care of us. So daycare was just something that I wasn't totally familiar with, but Something that helped was Anthony and his brothers uh, grew up going to daycare. So it was nice to know that they were able to do that, but it still was like totally new to me and I was still pretty nervous about it. The first day she was there, she had some time to kind of like adjust and stuff, but the daycare sends notifications to us like whenever she eats and sleeps and like gets her diaper changed and then photos and stuff occasionally. It was comforting to see like while I was back at work that she was surviving you know <laughs> she was like able to do her thing digger has been good so i'm really thankful for all of her teachers and yeah they've been great and then the second part of that is work has been really good i've actually loved going back to work because i feel like it's i have such a good balance with like being a mom but also being like my own individual self I'll drop her off at daycare and then go to work. I get to walk around more like running errands and also yeah, to and from work, which is nice. And then once I do come home, then it's just like that separation between work time and family time is just so clear. So it's nice like when I do come home, I'm like all my time is dedicated to like Noelle, Anthony and Manny. And it's just like family time, like playing with each other, grocery shopping, making dinner, you know, taking walks and stuff. It's a nice balanced lifestyle right now, which I'm very thankful for. So the second thing that I learned is that during the phases that are like the most rough are when she is like developing and growing the most. So obviously like the newborn phase is really rough um, because she's like getting used to being outside of the womb and figuring out how to live in this outside world. So as like her, um, what's it called? As she's like developing her vision, cause newborn vision isn't that great. She'll start to cry and stuff more, but it's because she'll start to see better. And so something that's really fun is like during those phases, she'll start to be able to like interact with us or she started to be able to interact with us a bit more because she could see us better. And then, hello, doggy. You wanna go inside? And then I think during three months, she also had another like sleep regression kind of rough period, but that's also when she goes through another growth spurt. I also remember that she like developed a lot then. I don't remember exactly what it was, but right now she's going through another one at six months. She did a good job going down to sleep and like sleeping at night. Like she would wake up once before we would go to bed and then once like in the middle of the night. But then as six months approached, like she would wake up maybe like two or three times in the middle of the night. But right now she's like developing so much. She's putting together the pieces to start crawling. She's like starting to sit up on her own, like push herself up and sit up. And then also like play while sitting up. I don't remember what else. Oh yeah, at three months, she started like making new sounds and stuff, which is really cool. She's just going through a lot of changes developmentally and growing more. So yeah, that's kind of like the positive way to look at it. The third lesson that I learned is you'll be able to eat dinner together again and also eat out at restaurants again. When she was a newborn, there were times where Anthony and I like didn't eat dinner at the same time for a while because one of us would either be like, carrying her or like trying to get her to sleep or something like that. And I just remember thinking like, man, I appreciate the days before where we were able to eat dinner together. Uh, but those came back pretty quickly. And the second thing was being able to eat out again, which we were able to do pretty much like at around five months. Uh, the first time we went to a restaurant in West Seattle with some of my high school friends, 
that was really fun and we were like shocked that we were able to do that. So a couple of weeks later, we went out to another restaurant and it was another restaurant in West Seattle called Lady J, which they kindly invited us to have a meal over there. But they were super nice and accommodating with like sitting us outside and then moving one of the chairs so that Noelle's stroller could be there. So she was just like chilling with us while we were eating. Like we were able to take our time. Uh, we were able to talk to the owner. He kind of gave us the lowdown on the restaurant and like how they opened during COVID, but really the community helped kind of keep them open. And like, they were just so supportive during those rough times, especially for restaurants. So yeah, overall it was like such a good experience. Thank you again to Lady J for inviting us. This isn't paid, but again, they did invite us to have a meal over there. Um, they actually are also opening a bakery in the South Seattle area called Little J and they're opening in September. So I'm really excited to take our family out to go there because I love trying new bakeries. So definitely check them out. I'll have links for them in the description box below. So kind of related to going out to eat again, uh, the fourth lesson that I learned is you can still do things with a baby. You just have to be prepared for the different scenarios that can come up. So we were able to go to a Mariners game, a Sounders game, raspberry picking. Um, you saw in previous vlogs, we went oystering and clamming. Like a lot of the things that we would do without a baby, we are able to do with one. We just have to prepare for like how we're gonna feed her, how we're gonna change her diaper if we need to. Something that's really nice for like the Mariners and Sounders games is T-Mobile Park in Lewin Field. Uh, normally they have that clear bag policy, but they allow coolers for like baby bottles and baby food and also diaper bags like it doesn't have to be in a clear bag uh, you just have to let security know so you can bring it in and then also i think both places have dedicated nursing rooms um, i didn't have to use it at t-mobile park but at lumen field they have they have like a dedicated nursing area but they also had one of those lactation pods and so i use that to just breastfeed her. I'm very thankful that we're able to like still do things and also be able to take her to experience those things too with us. The fifth thing that I learned is that we can survive with flying with an infant. <laughs> we went through three flights, um, one to Cincinnati and then two on the way back from Cincinnati to Seattle. And we survived with a baby. I don't think she cried on the flight. There was one time she was crying when I was changing her, but that was just like, a brief thing. So I wanted to share a couple of tips for what helped me. So I have five tips that helped me the most to survive flying with an infant. So the first thing was waiting to board. So normally when you board the plane, they allow families and like people who need more time to board to go before everybody else. So Anthony actually went first so that he could give them the stroller, the car seat, and also put our bags up. And then I waited outside like um, at the gate, just kind of until everybody was boarding basically. And that was nice because I had her in the Moby and we were just able to like walk around. Sometimes she'd kind of fall asleep, but it's way easier to keep her waiting while I'm standing up than when I'm sitting down. So that helped a lot related to that. The second tip is bringing like a baby carrier. For me, I really like using the Moby baby wrap, which I've used like or you've seen in some of my vlogs and stuff. That was great because she falls asleep so easily in that. Um, the third tip that helped me was feeding the baby during takeoff and if possible, have your baby asleep during landing or just during the flight in general. But feeding during takeoff helps because their ears will pop. Uh, they won't be able to do that on their own. Like normally we could just swallow or like chew gum or like blow, um, like hold our nose and then blow out. but. Feeding the baby will help pop their ears. And then, yeah, you, I thought that I would also have to feed the baby when we're landing, but one of the flights, we just had her sleep through the entire landing and she just stayed asleep. And the fourth tip that helped me was bringing a small diaper bag. Uh, we have like a bigger backpack, but we also have a smaller bag to just carry like some quick essentials. So that was nice because I could just bring the small uh, crossbody bag with me and Noelle to the bathroom when I needed to change her. Also, side note, apparently not all flights have baby changing tables. Thankfully, all three flights that we went on, on Delta, um, they did have changing tables, but I only had to use it once. So anyway, uh, the small diaper bag is nice to bring 
um, like a small changing pad to put on top of the changing table, some diapers, wipes, um, doggy bags. So that like, if we have to throw a stinky diaper away, that'll help mask the smell. And then also a change of clothes, which Noelle actually needed because she ended up throwing up uh, while I was changing her. And then also just having like a couple small toys to keep her entertained while we're in the seat. Uh, we have these two toys, these teething toys, one for my high school friend, one for my parents. She loves these. Uh, and it's nice because you can like stick her hand through it. So that kind of helps her uh, hold on to it a bit better. And then we also have this small book that's like kind of crinkly. Um, and she loves that just because of the sound that it makes. And then the last thing that I learned was I love seeing my family love Noel. Again, we're up here in Seattle and majority of our family is down in Southern California. So when they do come visit or we go to see them, it's just so, it's like the best thing ever to see them with her. And like, especially my parents to see them as grandparents. And like, you can just tell that they like love her so much. Like it, you can feel the love like overflowing the same with Anthony par Anthony's parents too like they just love her so much which makes me feel so happy and even like feel loved through that too so yeah it's the best thing so while I was working on this video I actually posted in my YouTube community tab mentioning that I do a little Q&A at the end of this video and I actually received some questions so let's get into the Q&A so the first question, what are some things you thought you wouldn't do as a mom, but you do now? One thing, which is actually on right now, is we're listening to a lot of Tagalog nursery rhymes, so Filipino nursery rhymes. Um, I grew up, or I can understand Tagalog, like my parents will speak to me in Tagalog and I'll respond. Um, and I am not very good at speaking Tagalog, like I know a lot of kind of like vocabulary and stuff, but it's hard for me to put together sentences and to conjugate verbs. So I don't think we would have like such an emphasis on Tagalog stuff. Yeah, we've just been putting that on like all the time on TV or um, like when I'm getting ready in the morning, we just have that playing in the background. So I love that. <laughs> the next question is from Jonay. Um, she says, we miss you on the platform, which is so sweet. Um, and then she says her question is, how's mom life going and are you planning to stay in Washington or wanting to venture out? So mom life has been great. Honestly, I knew being a mom would be good, but I didn't expect it to be this good. Especially just like as Noelle's growing older and is able to like interact with us and stuff and like is developing, like I love that so much. And we are planning to stay in Washington for now. There's still so much that I want to do here and there's just so much that I love about Washington that I don't see us leaving anytime soon. Uh, this person actually mentioned that they binge watch all my videos from moving from SoCal to Seattle, so thanks for doing that. Questions. Has motherhood affected your outdoor adventures or social outings? Um, and then the second one, what parts of motherhood are you most excited about or anxious about? So has motherhood affected my outdoor adventures or social outings? Uh, we haven't really done many outdoor adventures since having a baby. Uh, we did like clamming and oystering, but no like backpacking or camping or hiking. But we did get a baby backpack so we can go hiking with her. We could go hiking with her with just like a regular baby carrier, but we just didn't really make time to do that. Uh, but hopefully by next summer, we probably will be doing that a bit more. And then social outings. Uh, I would say not so much, but even before having a baby, I kind of leaned towards like staying in a lot more and not like going out so much. Um, also, we usually eat meals at home, like don't go out to eat that much with friends. So I feel like it wasn't too much of a transition. Um, but yeah, even with the baby, we'll still hang out with friends. Like I mentioned in the video, we go out to like games and stuff. Like I feel like we're not limited to hang out with friends. Again, we just have to be prepared for the baby things that could happen. What parts of motherhood are you most excited about and anxious about? Most excited just like to continue to see her growing um, and developing, like when she's gonna be talking or even crawling and walking or like what other foods she's gonna be trying and just seeing her reactions to that. Um, and then anxious about, 
I don't know, overall I see motherhood as like a pretty positive experience. I feel like the worst part that I could think of is like, I would be anxious over losing sleep at night, but I'm already doing that. <laughs> I don't know, maybe just, I hope that everything that I'm doing has a positive impact on her just because she is a whole person, you know? So I just hope that overall she just looks back at her childhood and just like us as parents and has like a whole positive experience. It would be cool to know more about you and Anthony's jobs, things like work-life balance, how the job market is looking like nowadays and anything else you guys would wanna share. So I work as a program manager. Uh, Anthony is an engineer. Uh, he works outside of the city, I work in the city. And work-life balance, at least speaking for myself and my experience, um, I find work-life balance to be pretty good, thankfully. And the job market, again, we're not, at least like within my company and organization, we're not like hiring as much as we were like a couple of years ago. Um, but I mean, there are job postings and stuff, so. What does your typical day look like now that Noelle is a little older? Do you plan on moving to a different place, like a house or townhouse? Do you plan on reducing hours to be with Noelle more? So my typical day is like a combination with like daycare, drop-off, pickup, um, work, running errands, like grocery store, picking up things from the store that we need, um, walking with Manny and Anthony, and eating at home and playing with Noelle until she goes to sleep and then hanging out with Anthony, watching like YouTube usually on the TV and then going to sleep. Uh, trying to figure out how I can fit YouTube in more in that routine, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Do I plan on moving to a different place? Yeah, we're looking to move, uh, not totally in a rush, but we would like something bigger than our one bedroom condo and I don't plan on reducing hours to be with Noelle more at the moment. What would be your best advice to someone planning on moving to Seattle? So I have two pieces of advice. One is kind of like a practical piece of advice and then the other is more of like a mindset thing. So the practical piece of advice is once you do move, try to get a place at a hotel or maybe like uh, an Airbnb just for a couple of weeks or maybe a month just so you can get a feel for the area Know what neighborhoods you like which ones you don't like before you commit to a whole lease And then the mindset thing is I think just have a positive mindset about the weather like a lot of people like to Think that gray days gloomy days rainy days is like bad weather, but I actually really enjoy those days and I think having that positive outlook like trying to see the positive side of things why I like those days is because I can walk around the city and not get a sweaty <laughs> um, my skin because I have eczema my skin like is a lot happier when it is gloomier and rainier so yeah and like all this rain and clouds and everything like that is good so that the plants can be so green and so happy here. So yeah, the whole mindset piece of advice is just try to look at the positive side of things. And then the last question or two questions is, which are the best kid-friendly attractions in Seattle? And how is Manny feeling now that he's a big brother? Love your content, love from Mexico. Thank you for sharing the love and for showing Manny love too. Um, so I think out of a lot of like the tourist attractions in Seattle, there's the Museum of Pop Culture, which is at the Seattle Center by the Chihuly Glass Museum and the Space Needle. Um, outside the Museum of Pop Culture, there's like a playground that kids can play at. Um, and also there's like the International Fountain, which is on sometimes and kids can like play in the water there. And then also Pier 62 has um, some fun like outdoor activities out on the pier. So at least the last time that I went in January of this year, they had like a little soccer field. They had giant chess and checkers, uh, cornhole and stuff, and just like a lot of space to kind of let the kids run around. So those would be my recs. 
And then how is Manny feeling now that he's a big brother? He's been great. Initially, he just had to get used to Noelle and her scent and her sound like when we first brought her home. Uh, but he slowly was able to acclimate and now he's totally fine with her. You can tell that he like is resisting to like lick her. So those are all the questions and that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.